and we are going to start. Okay, I'm going to go on mute and then just um, chat with me directly the Zoom chat if you have anything to say. Okay. All right. All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for this webinar. Wait, uh, not yet, not yet, not yet. I haven't started yet. I have the click start webinar and then you'll start. Okay. All right. Uh, welcome, everyone, and thank you for joining us today on the webinar for Crafting Technology Investment and Blueprint and Achieving the Art of the Possible. Uh, I'm joined here today with a couple of partners of mine, Manan Thacker, who's part of the consulting organization, and Miguel Sanchez, who leads Synoptech's Business Software and Solutions Group. Um, we're going to be starting in just a few minutes, and um, we're going to have time for questions and answers near the end of the presentation. Uh, we'll make sure that we cover everything for you. We're excited to get started here. All right. So if we dive right into it, uh, I've already introduced ourselves here. We'll be covering all of the details um, here in just a second. But let's talk a little bit about setting up the stage here. Um, you know, as we were prepping for this webinar and talking about recent conversations that we've been having with our customers um, one thing that still continues to be a confusing point for everybody is what is digital transformation? Um, you know, clearly there's an awful lot of marketing hype that, that's out there today. And, you know, we felt like this was going to be a really good grounding definition to put in place as we start to talk about ongoing challenges with technology implementation and then our solutions for, for solving for those problems. So we thought, what better place to go to for a standard definition than to, uh, to Gartner? And the way they explain digital transformation is it's the process of exploiting newer digital technologies and supporting capabilities. So there's an awful lot in that phrase there to create robust new digital business models. And we've got a couple of case studies. We have a case study that we're going to get into that talks about that. But it really helped set the stage, though, with this, even with Gartner's definition, definition here, there is a bit of room for interpretation and a room for different interpretations out there. And it leads us to some ongoing challenges that we've got today. And so, Miguel, if, if you'd, you know, talk us through, you know, what we're seeing here with some of this Forrester research that's talking about even in 2023, we're still struggling with technology deployment. Yep. Um, so as we think about, you know, why digital transformation fails, and, and it's all those things uh, to the left, you know, lack of strategy, vision, lack of funding, project management, et cetera, um, all of that really speaks to a fundamental issue of not having a clear definition of what digital transformation means to the organization. You know, is this an example? Is it simply just a digitization of internal process? Or is it really for the purpose of launching, you know, a new product or service, or maybe changing the way that those products and services are delivered? Um, so once defined, really answering the why is so important. You know, what is the alignment to the overall business strategy? So it's so critical in the early part of the journey to have a well-defined strategy, you know, a vision of the future state, um, you know, what are the benefits, you know, the synergies to be achieved, and then ultimately the return on investment uh, that we realize through this process. So envisioning really ensures that you're able to get the foundation right. You know, this includes the business processes, you know, being well defined, optimized, you know, the technology blueprint, the enterprise architecture being well defined and designed, um, the organizational structure, roles, accountability being well defined, you know, and all of this as part of this envisioning process. Um, you know, along with a strong vision comes an execution roadmap um, and plan. I mean, really, this is a guide to the future. So this ensures that those things like lack of funding, you know don't become a critical issue, you know, the ability to, to scale, vision strategy, et cetera, as you know, a well-defined vision strategy really brings the organization together. So your business stakeholders really understand the value of the transformation, you know, what the expected outcome is from the business results perspective. Your IT leadership, all well aligned on what the end state is and what they're marching towards along with that business strategy. The organization as a whole, really knows their part and so well transformation. So again, once it all ties back into really what we're going to be speaking to about today is, is really having that strong vision in that, that strong kind of light. Okay. All right. So having those issues in place, um, you know, looking at this information, we decided to do some additional research on our side last year 
and we partnered with uh, the Everest Group to do uh, this research work against uh, 120 uh, of our uh, customers, senior executives in our customer population, and they Everest organization applied their pinnacle model, uh, which is a pretty comprehensive and robust series of 60 questions uh, resulting in this multi-dimensional analysis that you see here in the upper left-hand corner. And it's measuring the organization on a lot of different factors. And, and Miguel, it, it got in and talked a lot about the issues that you called into question on your previous uh, slide there, where it's a combination of micro and macro issues within the organization. So you're constantly balancing between what's trying to happen at the lowest level, you know, maybe the atomic transaction versus also this ability to uh, synthesize all of this raw information up into analytics, so to speak, in order to uh, really start to chart a direction and make real data di driven decisions. But what the, the pinnacle model really shows is that there is a small subset of our customers who are really operating and man managing technology in kind of a top tier fashion. And these customers are actually achieving a 1.7x return on their technology spend compared to the rest of the people in this population uh, that we, we surveyed. And I think what's interesting here is a lot of times when we talk about technology projects, we're thinking it is just the application of technology. I need this tool to solve this problem. But when we look at the information or we look at the, the subset of the questions that were being looked at by, by Everest, 40% of that survey focuses on people and organizational capabilities. So again, it, you know, and it goes back to kind of that age old people process and technology that, that is still very relevant today as it ever was. And if all three of those areas aren't being balanced, we're not going to get the full potential out of our technology spend. And so the bottom half of this slide really kind of talks about just a few differences that we found interesting, you know, for all of you to take a look at of how a pinnacle organization compares to other organizations. And so, you know, the, the pinnacle organizations are, you know, they're still trying to find internal talent, but they're not struggling nearly as much as other organizations are because they have constant focus on training and development and even retirement of uh, older technologies. Uh, they find that they're less uh, uh, susceptible to organizational change management issues because, again, it's baked into their DNA that they're resolving these, these change management issues as they go forward. Um, they have a greater uh, sense of what that digital journey is. They've gone through and done the effort of defining what digital transformation is for them. And then lastly, you know, that leadership support that Miguel mentioned previously is definitely there. These are engaged leaders who realize that the technology is going to let their organization be more effective and efficient if they go forward and they, they embrace what this change represents. And so what we're gonna do here was we've looked at all of this information and we've actually let this influence our consulting methodology and how we approach these methodologies and why our approach to this is yielding superior results than to just traditional uh, systems analysis and design. And so to walk through that, we're going to have Manan walk through our consulting strategy at a high level. Great. So we're going to talk about the, uh, we discussed about how this digital transformation is important. It has become kind of evident that every technology or every business needs it, but how do we do it? I think we just don't simply dive into it. We need to make sure that we have a proper plan built out in place. Now, and that plan is something has to be a business driven plan, uh, which is then supported by the technology. And when we deliver this kind of plan, which is more or less a blueprint of getting that kind of transformation successful, I think uh, that plan will enable whether you'll be able to get the increase in revenue, whether we are talking about 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x revenue over a period of, let's say, three years or five years, uh, how will we ensure that the overall profitability is increased? Uh, and then it also entails the process optimization. It also ensures that the compliances are met. The risk, risk has been mitigated and managed properly. And uh, ultimately, the optimization of cost happens to a certain degree. And this is what all the plan should support. And 
at Synoptic, how we do it is more in terms of calling this whole thing as Envision. And Miguel touched upon very briefly in the beginning that we uh, the whole success mantra is about the Envision Transform and Evolve. And we focus on how do we leverage this technology in order to ensure that the business is grown. And we start with the business and that's where the business is in the driving seat to define the technology. With uh, business comes with the kind of strategic insights, uh, what needs to be there, what kind of process, what kind of models that need to be refined or kind of optimized. Uh, and then based on that definitions, I think that will have an impact on how technology is going to get changed. And then based on the technology changes, it can have an impact on kind of systems, the platforms, the tools that are being used. And once that have an impact, uh, impact on the overall usage of the technology, that will definitely change the way different data points are there in the system, how the data is originated into the system. And once we talk about the data that impact the overall analytics, how the data is then being used, whether it's used in terms of getting the business insights. So from the business, from the operations transformation perspective, we are also talking about that how technology has become the enabler in achieving those things. And when we talk about this transformation being achieved with the help of technology, what plays a major role is the business and the persona. That is where the focus should be. And then when we, we are defining this blueprint, we are focusing on whether we have right set of people who are delivering those kind of strategical initiative that the organization is envisioning at this point. And that is happening through the interaction, collaboration, different kind of process modeling that we can do. And then uh, we have to make sure that we are not just uh, constantly redoing it or we are just uh, reaching to the timeouts, but we are making sure that we are working towards the future that where the organization should land up. And that can happen with the help of technology, where the technology will start becoming the enabler. And one very important aspect of that is it's not the technology which uh, drives the business. It is the business which drives the technology. What business requires based on that, the technology should be in that enabler seat. Whatever the business is trying to achieve, technology is at the core and it becomes the backbone of how the overall execution should happen. And one of the most important aspects is whenever we're talking about this digital transformation, I think the technical debt needs to be considered. And then when we talk about debt, it's a short-term and long-term debt both that should be factored in. We are talking about replacing, upgrading some sort of technology. But at the same time, we should also look at that what the investment that we are doing as an organization is in the right set of tools and technology or not. And once it is implemented, does it support or kind of take you towards the ROI that is envisaged. So these are the factors that is being considered when we talk about the digital transformation. And Jerry has very well defined in the beginning that when we talk about digital transformation, there are a lot of different definitions exist. But here we are talking about how well it can help in terms of scaling the business, whether we have made our organization data driven or not. Are we looking at leveraging data at every possible change, at every possible touch points, whether the data is being used to define what kind of experience that we are leaving for our customer, what kind of experience that we are leaving for our employees as well. And that is achieved through the kind of analysis that we can do and what kind of pain areas that we have uh, identified, what kind of goals that we have set, are we able to achieve each of those goals, whether each and every department or a function has been enabled to achieve the kind of result that we have envisaged. And with those identification of problems, with those identification of solutions, we'll be able to define that roadmap, which is what we call it as a blueprint or the kind of roadmap to the success. We typically do this kind of exercise within six to nine weeks where different kind of stakeholders or the C-level executives or the different kind of department heads and SMEs are being interviewed and kind of uh, taken their inputs into consideration to really come up with this kind of roadmap or plan. And that's the kind of blueprint of a success. And we have been doing this over a period of time. So in the next slide, I think, Jerry, if you can talk about how we have done it for one of our customers, that yeah. will give us some more insight. Yeah, great. Thanks, Manan. I think what's, what's 
what's essential with this slide, and it's a and it's a tee into the next slide here, is that we see this as a circular exercise, right? To perform this analysis up front, to do this envisioning leading into the transformation, but without constant follow-up and follow through. And it was that's something that uh, we also learned from the pinnacle research that a pinnacle organization has this ability to focus on long-term value realization, and they can keep their eyes focused on those objectives over a longer period of time than anybody. And this circular reference now is what leads us into you know, this next uh, case study that we've got right here. And this is one where, you know, the customer had come to us originally, uh, they just said, hey, we need help finding uh, our new ERP platform. Um, we're a $300 million organization, but we intend to uh, double or triple that size in, you know, over the course of, of three to five years. And essentially their objective was they were moving from institutional training and wanted to do more direct-to-consumer online training. Um, and they came and asked us the question about um, their ERPs because it couldn't scale with where they were headed. And we sat down and we applied our methodology here. And we actually began with the senior uh, leadership team and spoke with them and identified, you know, just inherently where they had been struggling with technology deployments in the past. And if we go back to that previous model, the model always started with somebody saying, well, we need digital transformation. And they never did any other analysis as to why or what the business was trying to accomplish. And so that first conversation that we had with them was really centered around how do you see yourself getting to that 300 million in, or, or that, that 2X or 3X increase in revenue that they had charted for themselves? And they really had not walked through all of that. The CEO clearly had an idea of what they wanted to do, but there was not a stepwise plan that got them from their current state, even with a new ERP, to get them there over that period of time. And so what we did instead was we came in with our comprehensive review. We started with the senior leadership team, walked into the different uh, department leaders, and applied that exact same focus that Monin referenced before. So we identified where in this institutional to direct a consumer transformation that they were about to perform, how were departments going to change? What was going to become important? And what roles, techniques, tools, processes, et cetera, were going to become essential over a period of time? And when were they gonna become essential? So that was really critical to our long-term recommendation. So we gave them uh, a plan that included five levers of change. And one of them was definitely a governance lever that focused on keeping their eyes on changing how they brought technology to market and how they looked at it. And those other levers then were focused on not just putting the foundation in place that the ERP would represent, but putting the digital platforms in place that were going to allow them to move from this institutional physical training model into a digital model, which would then lend itself to becoming this direct-to-consumer model. And in that equation, we actually showed them how they could eliminate major operational expense uh, line items off their uh, off their bottom line today that were base that were essentially going to fund the rest of the transformation in front of them. Um, and so th this is what we do. So by following that methodology, we can lay out the timeline as far as how the, you or, uh, uh, you know, or this particular customer can get to realizing that technology strategy, but very importantly, also put the governance program in place to get that evolutionary concept moving. Because in this particular case with this customer, some of these transformations were going to take one to two full years to get through that entire business cycle before the, the value would be realized. And so keeping that constant vigilance on making sure you're delivering those solutions uh, is essential. And that's what the governance program that we put in place comes up to. Okay. Um, I think we, what we've got now with this next slide here, Mon, and I'm going to put it back over to you. Um, this is a series of questions that, that we've come up with. These are just a couple of examples of some of the questions we asked, but uh, we thought we would have our moderators um, turn these questions over to you. So very quickly, you're going to see these come up 
as a uh, series of questions to you to go ahead and answer. And we'd, uh, we're going to be interested to see the results as people come back uh, with their answers. Mon, and while while they're answering their questions, any any highlights you want to make on these on these items? Well, I think it is very important that when we are defining uh, the overall roadmap or a plan, uh, what is important is that we not only talk about or just think of future, but we also understand that have we quantified the result that we are looking at, and are your people, are your leader really aligned? To the kind of strategy that you're looking at and is it not something coming just a top-down approach but it's something where it is kind of a combined vision that everybody is trying to achieve and whether you have those like measurable results defined which is where you'll be able to really focus on the results are your people are your key uh, stakeholders are your project sponsor are they really aligned with kind of results that you're trying to achieve and do we really have a kind of governance model in place? Because that's very important. You define all those things, but you need to have right set of people to execute the overall plan. And whether you have that kind of governance in place and that framework is something, and it's more of a multi-layered framework where it starts with the overall execution level, then it goes to the level where there are certain decisions are being made out and it also, goes to a level where there are strategic alignment from the management buy-in and they are also aligned with the vision. So it's the whole organization which is driving the change. And it is where the acceptance is also very important that people are accepting the, the change that we are trying to bring in. And these are typically a multi-year program as you rightly said in the previous slide that in order to achieve the kind of uh, result that we are expecting if the plan is to lay out uh, 3x or 5x or let's say from 200 to 500 million kind of growth that you're expecting so those kind of plans require that multi-year strategy and multi-year execution and that is to be done through a very well organized or kind of governance in place so i think with that uh hopefully we can see that the people have started responding but i think we can uh move ahead and go to the next slide so that yeah. Thank you. No, that was great. Thank you very much. Uh, let's get to the next slide here. So in a previous slide there where we talked about, uh, you know, our methodology and our formula, uh, we talked about uh, a 5X guarantee. Um, and so what we've seen is that the, the Forrester research, the Pinnacle research, even our own research that we've done with the customers that we've spoken with here, have all shown us time and again, there are some constant uh, findings that, that we've come up with every time we've gone to one of these engagements. And so without having that whole uh, formula put together, starting with executive uh, uh, definition as far as where the organization is headed and why technology is being applied to this transformation, and then outlining that framework over a period of time, coupled with the governance, we found consistent gaps across that. And so what we're offering here with, with our 5X guarantee is that we're so confident that we're going to be able to find these value opportunities for you that we're gonna guarantee that we're gonna find 5X the value of our engagement fees for you in recommendations that you're going to be able to implement um, associated with any of our of our assessments that we put out there. So, so we're putting our money where our mouth is in regards to findings, uh, in regards to how you're going to uh, move forward and the, the value that this technology is going to bring to you. We've got a, a QR code uh, down here at the bottom where if you're curious and you want to learn more about it, you can go ahead and click that QR code. And um, I think with that, uh, we're going to uh, open it up to a series of questions. And let's see here. Uh, Tiffany, you wanna you wanna feed the questions in, or how would you like to approach the questions? I think the first question we've got here is one that's come in from the outside is, uh, you know, there's been an awful lot of, of, of talk in the 
past few months uh, and even more so in the last week in regards to uh, the influence of artificial intelligence and chat GPT or now Microsoft Copilot into business solutions and how do we feel that that is going to uh, affect any of the items that we talk today. And, and I would say that again, from the standpoint of, of our methodology is, is technology agnostic. Um, we don't necessarily feel that, uh, you know, AI is going to be uh, uh, any different from a influence into the organization as any other technology. There's going to be a, a, a big focus. There's going to be a lot of interest of where we can apply it. Uh, what we look for with all of our solutions is where can we provide solid and sound uh, business solutions and try to avoid the hype cycle. Uh, but what I do think is important with uh, the, the use of AI is McKinsey has published uh, a paper recently that really talks about um, the potential for AI in industry. And they are predicting that by 2030, AI is going to add uh, $13 trillion of GDP to the global economy. Uh, and that addition is not going to be to the big technology firms. They're going to be to every other business who has applied AI into their business models. But what they talk about is that there's not, you know, one of the things they clearly call out in their research paper is that the, um, 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 that, that the timeline of somebody saying, you know what, I'm going to sit back and watch. I'm going to be a, a, not an early adopter, but I'm going to watch and wait and see these people are going to be so caught behind the, the power curve that once these early adopters figure out how to embed AI into their business models, you know, once they, they, they figure out how those integration points are going to work and they get AI implemented into their business models, their gains in market share are going to become so rapid, the laggards are not going to be able to keep up. So this is one thing where, you know, what we're working on is how do we imply this into the, the, the models and how do you start to develop that uh, that 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 capacity or capability in the early phases with uh, uh, trials and conference room pilots, where you can figure out where it works for your organization? Because that is one thing they make very very clear: every organization is going to be different on how they go about it. Your data is different. Your influencers, your detractors are all different. So everybody has to go their own journey. Um, let's see here, Monin. Um, I think one of the things that you talked a little bit about was, um, you know, you had talked a little bit about one question we got here was, you know, 70% of the large scale digital transformations are, are still continuing to fail based upon our first page. What is it different about us that guarantees success? That's interesting. And I think, uh, so if you understood in a little bit of details in terms of those 70, 73% of transformation programs fail. I think one of the fundamental reason is that have those been defined properly? Have there been governance displays uh, where there's proper execution, where people ready to accept those kind of changes? So I think it is very important that it has been defined in a proper state as to what measurable goals are there, whether are we ready to take up what is required to be changed and are your people really ready to get those kind of changes in place? And once people are there, do you have a set of technologies and tools supporting those kind of changes? And are you really focusing on the measurable business outcomes? If all those things are there in place with a proper governance model, I think uh, that will give you that guarantee that all this kind of executions or large scale digital transformation programs are bound to be successful. And it's not something which is a big bang or a just a one-year program. It's more of a multi-year and kind of evolving. And Jerry rightly mentioned earlier that it's an ongoing program. It's not something where you just target in a one go. It's more something that you define those intermediate milestones and then you achieve eventually. And then you gradually reach to the state that you want to go to. Miguel, anything that you want to add on this? Yeah, and I think this touches a, a little bit on, um, on 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 what we talked about earlier is, is really thinking through a well-defined plan. You know, that plan and that strategy um, you know, really creates and, and fosters adoption throughout the organization. Um, you know, and without that, you know, it's very difficult 
thank you. If there's not broader alignment, um, if people don't really understand what I'm doing, and that vision isn't clear. Um, and it, it does lead to many of the issues that we see today, um, you know, as it relates to technology spend. You know, that spend is it really thought through, organized. Um, it's difficult for IT organizations to articulate to the business, you know, the value. Um, and the benefit, and it's very difficult for, for businesses to understand that value and benefit. Um, so going through this exercise really brings alignment. And once you have alignment, then it's a very powerful uh, tool in digital transformation. Hey, Miguel, staying on that line there, how important is it for your partner selection in regards to not just the, the strategy, the implementation, but also the operation of these tools? You know, it, it is, it is uh, definitely a consideration and it is important if you think about, you know, the partner ecosystem and you do have a variety of individuals or, or firms out there that could potentially be focused in, in one area or, or the next, whether that being strategy only or transformation or, or IT management um, and having kind of built over the years, you know, the capability of you know, IT strategy really you know, participating in the transformation and then not really stepping away, but, you know, evolving what was transformed, you know, the continuous improvement of that, um, you know, really bringing that full service you know, capability is, is critical. But if you don't understand what it means to operate this 10 to 15 years later, it's very difficult to think through what it means for the organization, you know, you're thinking about what it is and the plan and, and what the transformation in that journey will look like. So Miguel, staying on that thought then, why don't you tell us a little bit about Synoptic then and kind of how we're actually, we're, we're well positioned to help people through this Envision Transform and Evolve process. Sure, so Synoptic um, we founded in 2001 as an IT consultancy. So at the time, you know, the focus was really on IT strategy, IT assessment, um, program project management, portfolio management, um, large scale system implementation. And if you really think about it, you know, kind of achieving 5X was really in our DNA. And over the past 22 years, we really grew into an IT management or full service IT management service provider. And, and what that means is we built out, um, you know, a full capability and you see here the Envision Transform of all around really thinking through IT strategy, the alignment to business strategy, um, preparing the roadmap, envisioning the future state. And then that really led into the transformation. Uh, so the ability to migrate, upgrade, you know, implement that new greenfield implementation, et cetera, really transform the organization to that future state. And then once there, it's the continuous evolution of that future state and making sure that those services are continuously being improved, that the organization is realizing the full benefit and the ROI of that initial transformation. I think this is very important because it's very different than, you know, IT back in 20, you know, 15, 20 years ago, where you can kind of set it, forget it, or there was a, a thought that you would implement a technology and then maybe 10, 15 down, years down the line, you would completely refresh that environment. And we're in a different role now, the platforms and those platforms need to be involved, the ecosystem need to be involved. This is where this business model really, you know, takes shape. Um, in addition to that, it was, you know, building out an integrated service portfolio. Um, so over the years, you know, here to the left, uh, lower right corner, you know, business applications, data insights. And what this was really about is building out this, the capabilities and the services to address the needs of you know, the growing market where many organizations um, have enterprise IT needs, not just enterprise level organizations, right? As you're starting to see that in the lower enterprise, upper mid-market, mid-market. And, and, and bringing these capabilities is critical and that you know, very similar to the, the 10 to 15 year reference. Um, in today's world, all of these services, all these technologies have to be integrated and, and implemented you know, as, a, as a tighter um, business solution. You just can't implement a business application without thinking about security. You can't think about you know, implementing you know, you know, cloud advancement without the networks and the infrastructure that's gonna power that, that cloud capability, et cetera. So, um, it's a little bit about Synoptic um, and all of this really powered by a you know, platform built over those years. And really that platform was designed um, to really accelerate, you know, business results. Um, you know, in that 
our, our clients are able to really kind of connect into an existing platform, a mature platform that really fits into their business, you know, right size, right fit. That's great. Yeah, I think the, uh, the, the to me, the big differentiator here is not only can we do the, uh, the strategy work, but we can then implement it and operate it. And that ensures that that evolution phase is going to happen much more seamlessly uh, because we will have continuity across the teams as we go forward. So uh, uh, definitely excited about that. Um, I think that kind of brings us to the end here. I think maybe if we can show the results of the survey that we had. Um, let's see here. Let's get my, uh, trying to get my uh, piece out of the way here. Let's see here. Technology business plan results driven. So everybody is having a business results driven technology plan and it is spanning multiple years. So that's a great answer across the, the, the group here. You're well on your, your way there. Business leaders prepared to support. Again, 100%. That's fantastic. Measurable results. Um, and are you prepared to finding those results? That is that is indicative of what we see. In some cases, people have that. and and it, But it does not seem to be as consistent of an answer as the others. And I think one of the things we found is that when the results are short-term in nature to find and realize that you have a great chance of hitting that mark, but when you have something that might take one to two entire business cycles before you can see the results. Uh, sometimes that becomes a little bit harder because you might not get the uh, you might not get the the formula right uh, in that first implementation. But staying constant with it over the course of that, uh, you know, whatever that business cycle or whatever that return period is, is what really what separates um, the yeses from the noes there. Let's see here. Last question. Technology governance framework aligned with the overall business objectives. Again, a mixed bag here. Uh, again, I think that, um, you know, th this is a little bit of what we see in some of the different customers where there are uh, people who are engaged in the governance model and others who are not. Um, this is one of the hardest things to get going on because it is a human factor that is going to drive this and not necessarily a pure technology factor. And some parts of the organization <clears throat> who could be very essential to driving the change management may not feel that the, the, the governance process is worth their value. And I think it becomes the way to bring them to the table is trying to maybe change this, the structure less around a focus on just technology conversation, but more around business objectives and realization of those business objectives via technology solutions. And then letting each of these uh, leaders know where their role plays, because they they may end up having an indirect role versus a direct role. Miguel, um, you know, with all your time here in the company on these last two questions, what are your thoughts there? Yeah, I think a couple of things on, on measurable, measurable results. You know, I think it's important that the organization is aligned on what's being measured um, and you have different kind of perspectives throughout the organization. You know, as an example, maybe at the, you know, the board level or executive level, um, it's very EBIT focused. Um, you know, in, in those operational capabilities, it may be more about productivity throughput and, and really creating a you know, more efficient process across a particular operational capability. Sales may have more sales oriented. So it's really about being able to define what success is. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah, and then how are we achieving success and then how are we measuring success and then reporting against that. Um, and then on the technology governance framework, it is interesting given that these transformations, you know, they could be one to, to five year transformations and, you know, business changes, business evolves, as does the technology landscape, the competitive landscape. And it's really about putting a model in place that one keeps the organization you know, on track and is making those decisions to ensure um, you know, the, the end state and the objectives are met. Uh, but second is it's agile and flexible in a way that as things evolve and change, that the plan, the strategy, the vision could potentially change and how do you put those processes and that governance in place to manage that change um, you know, throughout the process. So, so those are my, my two comments on that. Great. 
Um, Monan, what what are your thoughts there on on those items, especially the um, you know the the broad engagement across the organization and in, in the technology governance? I think um, the governance has been playing a major role, and what is important is that many a times this kind of transformations are planned, uh, but when it comes to execution, I think in case of this long duration plans. The key is missed out. The focus has changed. The people changes during that duration. That's where I think the core focus is lost at times. It is very important to remain on track and keep on checking and just uh, making sure that we course correct wherever required to make sure that. And if there are times things happen where you may have to pivot the strategy in terms of really achieving or just adjusting with the changing business dynamics. I mean, you can see that there are certain changes and let's say it could be some external factors which is not in your control, like the, the, the economic outlook, what is happening. And that may have an impact in terms of the kind of strategic outcome that you're trying to achieve. And you made sure that the, you've got a right balance of people uh, in your execution team, which is what is supportive of the kind of vision that you have laid out. And then you're constantly measuring those kind of outcomes to make sure that you are realigning to achieve the success. I think that's very important that while the planning matters, but the execution matters the most and make sure that you know where you have reached to the finish line. Otherwise, there's no point in keep on running. Right. And and to your point, right, finishing through the finish line and not just stopping right there at the, uh, once you break the tape, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Great points. All right. Well, everybody, I'd like to thank everybody for joining us today. Uh, you know, Manan, Miguel, thanks for your, your thoughts and insights. Um, if you are interested or intrigued about how the 5X opportunity could uh, help your organization realize your strategic goals, click that link, follow through with it, and uh, we'd love to, uh, to follow up and talk with you more. Thank you for your time today.